Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's so good to see everybody, or in this case, not to see you. We know you're there. Thank you for being here today. We're excited about church this morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to have a great service for you this morning. Cody Johnson and the band are going to play and sing worship for us. We've got a great message planned for you. got a great testimony coming your way. We're excited about church this morning, so we just invite you to get a cup of coffee and, and sit down and bring the family together. And, and there was a scripture that the Lord gave me um, early this year in, in January, and it said, Be still and know that I am God. And all the conditions that our world is in, I'm so thankful that we have God and we know that He is still in control. Let's pray and let's ask God to help us today, shall we? Lord, we thank you, Lord, for loving us. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. We thank you, Lord, for everybody that's watching online throughout the states and throughout, throughout the world, Lord. We pray your blessings upon them. Holy Spirit, we pray today, O oh God, that you would take our words, that you would receive our worship. Lord, we worship for you, O oh God. And as, as the different ones worship in, in their living rooms, they worship in their house, they worship in their pickups, Lord. Wherever they are, Lord, right now, I pray, Lord, that you would... Just fill them with your Holy Spirit. Make this day a day that we will never, ever forget. We're grateful, Lord, that you are our Lord and our Savior. And in this Easter season where we celebrate your death and your burial, but more than anything, your resurrection, oh God, we thank you, Lord, that we worship you because you are alive today and living in us, that you took residence in us because you love us so much. Thank you, Lord, today for your presence in everybody's lives all over the world. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. God bless you. Listen, this morning we're honored to have Cody Johnson and have Jake and Jody. Jody. <laughs> <laughs> of all the things I've lost, I miss my memory the most. It's good to have Jake and Jody here. And we're excited about church. We're excited about uh, worshiping this morning, and we just invite you to enter into the worship. We're excited about it. Thank you guys so much for coming this morning. Y'all enter in and enjoy the worship this morning. God bless y'all. I wandered so aimlessly, I filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Well, I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the
There's a lighthouse on the hillside that overlooks life's sea. When I'm tossed, it sends a light out, a light that I might see. In the light that shines in darkness now, I'm safe. If it wasn't for the lighthouse, my ship would sail no more. And I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to Him for. Everybody that lives around us says, Tear a lighthouse down. You know, the big ships don't sail this way anymore. Ain't no use in that old thing standing around. But then my Pulls a line from that old house. Oh, you know it's still standing there on that hill. And I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to Him. For
consider all the works the hand have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power through the universe display then sings my soul my savior God to thee how A couple of weeks ago, I was home watching this live stream, just like you are, and uh, I had my coffee and uh, sitting there comfortably, and I've never claimed to have heard God's voice, uh, but I heard myself in my head saying, you should be there, you should be there, and for what reason, I still don't know uh, why I called Randy that day and said, I really, I'd like to come uh, play in church, and I, I, I've had people online talk about leading a worship service, and I, I want you to know that this is not us leading anything. This is uh, completely just by God's choice that we're here, and so um, in doing so, I automatically I called Jody, and, and, I, and Jody and Randy both said we should get Jake to come play with us, and uh, I called Jake, and immediately he said yes, and I thought, well, why don't you sing us a song, and I feel like this is the most appropriate song that we could play today, so... Maybe 
Christians are falling away from the Lord today. The West Coast is falling into the ocean, they say. Disease is killing our loved ones and children, but Christians, we have to be bold. Don't give up the fight, for it's still daylight, and God is still. God is still in control, and Jesus is still on the throne. The battle's not over, but victory is already won, and God is still. Troubles and trials, often they clutter my mind. In mile after mile, oppression's upon every side. Man, what a sweet reminder. You know, as they were singing that song, I was thinking of, of the story where Elisha had a moment when he was with one of his friends and they were surrounded by an army and it seemed like God wasn't in control. Uh, and Elisha said something. He said, there are more that are with us than are with them. And then he prayed a prayer. He said, Lord, open their eyes so that they can see. 
And they realized in that moment as God opened their eyes that he was right there the whole time uh, with an army bigger than the army that they were facing. And I just pray today, if you're here, I believe it's because God has a, a message for you and he wants you to know that he's still in control. And there's more from him that's on your side than anything this world could throw at you. Can we just go to the Lord in prayer this morning? Man, Jesus, I'm so thankful that you're still in control, that, that no matter what we face, that no matter how overwhelming the situation or circumstances may seem, and I know right now, God, for many, uh, there are overwhelming circumstances. Health may be failing, finances may be falling apart, jobs may be lost, anxiety, depression. Lord, there's so many things that this world would love to overwhelm us with. But I pray that same prayer, God, for all of us, for me, open our eyes so that we can see your hand still at work. And we can see all around us and know that you're still moving, that you're still faithful, that you're still in control. There's nothing that ever happens that surprises you. And, and may we find peace in you today, Jesus. And for those that may be running from you, that, that want to come to you, but just don't know how, I pray today, especially, Lord, that, that, that they would find that peace and rest in you and know that you're still, still there in control. Jesus, we need you. Uh, we invite you to come speak to each one of us. Encourage us. Fill us with hope. Uh, fill us with your wisdom and in, in your word, Lord. And we ask it all in your name. And everybody said... Amen. Amen. Listen, we are so glad to have all of you here with us today. There's so many good things that God is still doing here. Thank you guys for coming out and being with us today and playing. I always joke around. People say online church. I don't know how to do it because I don't know if I could sing at, at home with nobody around. And I tell everybody just sing like you do in the truck when I'm sitting at traffic because I sing like Cody Johnson uh, or Taylor Swift when I'm stuck in traffic and nobody's around. And I've seen some of you do the exact same thing. So man, we want to encourage you join in uh, with us this morning. See these songs. Clap your hands. Raise your hands. Uh, take a moment to share this if you haven't, because we believe that there's a lot of people that want to hear this same message of hope, and you have an opportunity by clicking the share button to throw this out there uh, and get the word out. But listen, we want you to know this. We're here for you in this season, and we're trying to do all we can as a church to stay connected to you, to, to continue to open up doors where you can grow in your relationship with Jesus. And so whether you've not got one at all or you're just getting started, or you've been down the road with Jesus for a while, we've got something uh, for all of you. Uh, you can go to our website, LoneStar.tv, and we've got a list of online Bible studies that we're trying to get cranked out that you can be a part of. Following uh, this service at, at 1130, we're going to have Digging Deep right back here live. If you're looking for a Bible study where you can just get deeper into God's Word and understand it better, Pastor Rob is going to be doing that. We've got an awesome men's Bible study and women's Bible study that happens every Thursday night on Facebook Live that you can jump on and join and be a part of Lone Star Kids is just knocking it out of the park, uh, dropping some fun uh, studies and fun moments together with your kids. And so if you haven't done it, you can go to our Lone Star Kids Facebook page and follow along. Pastor Amber, Joby not right in the gang are putting out some fun stuff that you can still do at home with your kids. And then Lone Star Students every Wednesday night coming at you through Facebook uh, and YouTube Live as well. And, and we're doing all we can because we love you. And in this season, we can't get together in person, but we're trying to do the next best thing that we can. And that's get together online. And the, the one thing that we do want to encourage all of you, uh, next Sunday is still Easter, all right? They haven't canceled Easter uh, because of this virus. And, and so we want to invite you back. And next Sunday, 10 o'clock, we're going to be coming to you live from down in the arena. Uh, Pastor Randy and our creative department have put together some amazing, uh, fun, and exciting elements for our Easter service next Sunday at 10 o'clock, coming straight from the arena. We want to invite you to come out uh, and be a part of that. Would you welcome to the stage for me this morning, Pastor Randy? We're grateful today that you're here. We have uh, generally, when we have church, we take this, give this opportunity for people to give uh, in the offering. And uh, we're not real sure that, uh, I don't think we'd get much today if we did that here, but we do have a uh, a push pay button on your screen there if you will if you would like to give to the church this is we still have bills to pay but let me say this as well if you're watching today and and you're a fan of Cody Johnson and you're like man I'm so glad I'm watching please don't feel like you have to give this is honestly this is not about 
you giving. We want to give to you. Uh, we have local people here in the church that give and support the church, and, and they've been so faithful through these tough times, and we thank you for that. Uh, but we never... We, we don't ever want people to think that we just, we're just here for money because that's not the case. We're here to serve and we're here to help God's kingdom go forward. And we do know that when we invest in the eternal things that, that God's kingdom always goes forward because that's the heart of God. And really it is an act of worship to give. And, and as you give today, I, I just want to say a word of prayer for you. Um, Cody's going to sing maybe one of my favorite songs in the whole world after we get through praying, and I'm excited about that. But let me pray for you, and the greatest gift that you can give God today is not in your checkbook. It's not in your wallet. It's your heart, and your heart is the most valuable gift that you could give today, and I just want to challenge you with that. God uh, is not impressed with how much money we have, but when we give him our heart, that pleases God, and that's a blessing to God. Let me pray for you. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for loving us today. Thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit, for your presence here today. I thank you, Lord, that you are a God that loves us, and that you didn't just talk about loving us, that you, you proved your love to us, for you so loved us that you gave your only son. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for Lord Jesus, that you made that sacrifice so that we could have eternal life and we could come into your presence. Bless everybody watching today online. I pray, Lord, that you would help our hearts to grow closer to you, Lord, as we, as we prepare our hearts, oh God, for your word and for uh, the songs, oh God, that you've anointed for, for Cody and the guys to sing. I pray, oh God, that your blessings would be on us and on everybody watching today. And we thank you, Lord, for this privilege. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless y'all. Thank you so much. At the mansion of his name Walls crumble, lives are changed In the midst of life's temptations He's there to see us through This man of which I speak is here today for you and me. His name is Jesus, but you can call him as you please. They call him Emmanuel, the King of all kings. times I've called his name prayed for forgiveness when used in vain often there's a peace in knowing his forgiveness stays the same the most famous in his story Jesus. 
Now, they're going to come back and sing another song that Cody just wrote, a brand new song called By His Grace. It's, it's a, an amazing song, uh, pardon the pun, but Amazing Grace. It's a wonderful song. I love that song. They call him Hosanna. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus came into Jerusalem. He came to Bethany, and then he came into Jerusalem, and, and he rode, he got on a donkey. The Bible says, a colt whereon never a man sat. And what that says, tells me as a cowboy, is that Jesus was the greatest cowboy that ever lived. Got on this colt whereon never a man sat. And as he was coming through Jerusalem, do you know what they said? They said, Hosanna. Hosanna. And they put palm leaves down in front of this donkey, and the donkey didn't buck Jesus off because Jesus was, as he is still today, the master of every situation. And in that time, they said, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. And Hosanna means God with us. Let me tell you something. Make no mistake. The greatest privilege that you'll ever have, that I'll ever have in my life, is to have the presence of God in me. You see, that's the reason that Jesus gave his life so that we could have access. Before that, man had to make sacrifices and man had to go through a high priest so that they could have access to God. Now, we have access to God. Why? Because Jesus, the ultimate supreme sacrifice, the one who knew no sin, knew no sin took on our sin, and he became sin, the Bible says, because he had never sinned before. He was the perfect sacrifice. And when he came into Jerusalem, I'm going to tell you something, there was a victory there that happened. And that victory happened for you. It happened for me that day. It happened for all mankind. And the scripture says, for as many as who have received him to them God gave them power to become the sons of God that might want to make you jump up out of your bed that God gave you the power to become adopted into his kingdom I don't know what you've heard before about anything that has to do with God but let me tell you something make no mistake God is a loving and a giving God and for that I serve him. Now, listen, today we've got a, got a great testimony for you. And uh, uh, a guy named Randy Dempsey comes to church here. Uh, it's just, I'm, I'm going to talk to you this morning. The title of my message is, That's Not Fair. I don't know if you've ever said that before, just like, that's not fair. I think a lot of times we say that in our world today, but before I preach to you just for, for this brief time, I'm, I want you to hear this testimony because it's really powerful. Well, 
Last week, I got a letter from the IRS, and they want me to come in and verify my identity because my social security number hasn't been used in over 30 years. 28 years of that was incarceration for an addiction that was just too overpowering for that old man. It was something that I couldn't fight alone. It took 28 years of my life. I've never been out in freedom no more than five months at a time in between them. This last time I did 14 years in federal and I got out and I come to my sisters and my sister, well, one of her demands was that I come to the cowboy church. And I, I fought against her a little while. So, you know, I've never done church very well. I said, no, you just come, come one time to this. You've never been to nothing like it before. So I did, and she was right. The moment I walked in the door, I felt comfortable. The reason why I'm sitting here today is because I felt comfortable when I walked in that church. It was like, I just, I just felt like I was supposed to be here. Which made me agree to come back a second time. And, and when I came back that second time is when, was when I, I raised my hand and I let Jesus, I didn't even know I raised my hand until I really didn't. When I, I went, when I opened my eyes up, I raised my hands up. So I knew then that I was called. And when it, we, he said, come on up, I said, that's me, here we go. 100% changed. It changed my way of thinking. It changed my way of living. Uh, it's just, I know now if there's something that's overpowering for me, I just... What I did is I found my armor right there. I found my shield against all the, every, all the problems I've had in my life that I've never been able to fight against. When a, when a thought comes in my mind now, what I do is I say, what will Jesus do? And they don't have a chance against that. And I'll never let that go. Yep. I know now that I don't have to worry about none of that stuff no more. I don't know. See my baptism video, but that old man's gone. <laughs> How sweet is that? The old man's gone. One of the things that I think is so amazing about God's grace is that God takes us where we are and he meets us where we are. So many people think that you have to get good or you have to be a good man or a better man in order for God to find you. But I'm telling you what, wherever you are, it's a great place to be because that's where God, that's where God found Randy Dempsey. And uh, whether, and I want to talk to you this morning about that's not fair. And it's, it's a, there's a parable in Matthew chapter 20. If you have your Bibles, there's a Bible app called Bible Gateway. And you can get on that and you can, you can look in Matthew chapter 20. And I want to talk to you about that for, for a minute. Before I get into that, <clears throat> a couple of years ago, I went to uh, some, with, with some friends of ours, of ours, we went to Alaska and we went fishing. And we went fishing for a salmon. The salmon were running and uh, where, you, where you snagged the salmon. We'd never done that before. And we thought, man, that'd be great. And then we went out into the bay and, and fished for halibut. Well, they told us that the fishing wasn't that great at that point in time. And, and we couldn't help but be a little bit disappointed. But <clears throat> we kind of felt like <clears throat> we're going to go because, you know, you don't ever, you fishermen, you don't ever catch anything unless you put your hook in the water, right? So we, we, were, we went out there, and, but before we did, the lodge that we were staying in, they, they, the, the propri proprietor, he told us, he said, don't take any bananas on the boat. And we're like, why? He said, it's bad luck. And, and it was so bad that they even had a picture of a banana on the side of the wall, and it said, no bananas in the boat. I mean, they were serious about the bananas not being in the boat. So we're, we're like, like, 
we don't really believe in that. We're not superstitious. I know a lot of people are, but I tell people, I tell superstitious people that that stuff only works if you believe it. If you believe it'll mess you up, it probably will. We just don't believe it. So we go out there and we kind of honor what everybody says. We don't take no bananas with us. And, uh, and so we're out, we're out on the bank and we're just snagging these salmon like crazy. And, and people, I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's just people standing on the side of the, uh, the river. And our guide, we're, we're dragging them in. Our guide moves us up where these other people are. And we just keep snagging these salmon in. It's like crazy. And, and we go back and we catch our limit. And when we're cleaning our fish, you could read people's mind. They were walking by there. And, 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 and what they were thinking, I'm sure, that's not fair. I can't believe that they caught all those fish right where we were. Then they moved up and they caught the fish. Well, we went through the week. We, we, we caught our limit every day, believe it or not. And what we realized was that, we, that God was just blessing us because he just wanted to. The guys was with us, they said they're glad they brought the preacher, but I knew it wasn't me. I knew I'm not that good. I knew it was God. So we're, we're uh, the last day, we, we go and we're, we're fishing for king salmon. And you get in this boat, and there's, there's boats right next to each other. And, uh, and we're dragging in these king salmon. And uh, just as we pull one in, my friend that was sitting right next to me, and we have these boats on both sides of us, my friend, he pulls out a banana, and he says, anybody want a banana? And you could have seen their eyes just like, it's like, I mean, they was, they was like, he brought a banana and they still caught fish. That's not fair. Well, here's it. Here we have in Matthew chapter 20, we have some people that said the same thing. Jesus, he was on his way up to Bethany. It was, on, it was, it was the week before he went to the cross. And he told his disciples a parable. And what he said was, was that there's a parable sto told about a vineyard owner. He owned a vineyard, and he wanted to go get workers for the vineyard. So he got up early in the morning, and he went, and he, and he got the workers that were standing around waiting for a job, and he brought them into the vineyard. And then it says at 12 o'clock, he went and got some more workers for the vineyard, and he brought them in. But the first workers, he told them that he would pay them a denarius a day. In other words, a full day's wages he was willing to pay if they would come and work for a full day's, for, for, give a full day's labor. And so, and then the ones that came at 12 o'clock, Jesus said that he would pay them accordingly. And then... Jesus went and he, at 5 o'clock at quitting time almost, he went and got some more workers for the vineyard and he, would, he said that he would pay them. So when it came time to pay them, he called the ones that came in at 5 o'clock and he paid them while the other ones that came in at 9 o'clock were watching. And he gave the ones that came in, listen to this, he gave the ones that came in at 5 o'clock the same amount of money that he promised to the ones who came in at 9 o'clock. And he gave the same amount of money to the ones that came in at 3 o'clock. The same amount of money to the ones that came in at 12 o'clock. And the ones that came at 9 o'clock, they were standing in line thinking, man, we're fixing to get more money than we thought we was going to get. And God gave them the same amount of money as he gave to the ones that came in at 5 o'clock. And the, peop the, the workers, in essence, they said, that's not fair. What we have to be careful about is we, as human beings, trying to tell God, the God, the great creator of this universe, that he's not fair. Guys like Randy Dempsey, the, the, our, uh, the guy that just did the testimony, been in prison for 18 years. The Apostle Paul, he was a murderer of Christians before he was converted, before God came into his life. 
And people look at him, and God could, and people could look at him and say, "Hey, that's not fair for you to get to go to heaven, for you to be able." And it, but here's what Jesus said: Don't make no make, make no mistake. This is what he said. He said, "The kingdom of God is like this." If you want to see the kingdom of God, what we think is fair and what we think isn't fair doesn't line up with what God says is fair. And if we're not careful, what we'll do, we will try to redefine everything in the book. And we'll try to redefine everything to fit our thinking. Do you know that God is not up in heaven looking down at you or looking down at me and going, hmm, I never thought of that. Maybe I'll, no, he knows everything. He's God. He's the creator. Let me tell you something. It takes more faith to believe in God as the creator of the universe than it does to believe in, what do you, what, what, what do you call it? When it? Evolution. I mean, like, you think about the Big Bang, like, you ever throw, bust up a, a wristwatch and then expect it to come together? It's not going to happen. Greater things, that the Bible says, that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We weren't just little amoebas swimming in the sea, and then we turned into a monkey with a, uh, uh, hanging from the tree, and then turned, wound up being a monkey with a PhD. No, it just didn't work that way. It's just not like that. God, in the beginning, created the heavens and the earth. And you might be asking yourself the question today, why is it, why is it that we have this sickness in the world? Why do we have the virus in the world? Why, why are people dying? Let me tell you something. This is not anything that's uncommon to our world because back in the beginning, you remember Adam and Eve, when sin came into this world, sickness and evil came into the world, but it's not always going to be this way. I, I'm just hoping that somebody's going to hear this, that there is hope for you because God is not going to allow these things to happen forever. Ever, there's going to be a new heaven, a new earth, because Jesus came so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We sing about it. We sing, we, we sing uh, the lighthouse. There's a lighthouse on the hillside that overlooks. There's nothing worse than walking around in the dark. Years ago, I had a barn, and, and the, we, we didn't have any lights in the barn, and I was always tripping over something. And you know, when the light comes on, it will either be a blessing to you or you'll say, turn that light off. It's hurting my eyes. Now, so my question to you is, are you offended by the light or are you blessed by the light? And then we sang that old Hank Williams song, I saw the light. What happened? What were, what are we saying? We're saying that Jesus, he is the light, and he comes in, and like it or not, he exposes who we really are. Some people don't really want to know who they are. I don't always like it, but I was challenged a year ago to pray the prayer and ask God, what deception have I bought into? Because you see... <clears throat> The scripture says that Satan is the father of deception. That means he's better at it than anybody else. And if we are deceived by it, we don't really know what the truth is because we've been deceived. You with me? But when we pray and we ask God, God, what deception have I bought into? Because we've, we've got a lot of turmoil in our world today. We've got a lot of people blaming a lot of people. My goodness, we got people blaming people for the virus. It's your fault we have this virus. Let me tell you something. Viruses happen. They just happen. But I want to say this, that God is still in control, but he is only in control of your life. Y'all don't leave me now. Stay hooked. God is only in control of your life if you invite him to have control of your life. God will never take control of your life unless you give it to him. We say, we say in this world, we say, well, God's in control. Well, he's in control, but we have to give him control. Ultimately, yes, definitely, God is in control because the Bible says heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will last forever. Let me tell you, let me ask you something about what do you value? 
What, are you, what is your value system? Because I dare say that God's value system is different than our world's value system. We put values on, on pickups and homes and cars and houses and, and, and church buildings. But the Bible says that God doesn't dwell in buildings made by man's hands, but that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And you say, well, how can that be? That God, that I am a temple that God lives in. You see, in the Old Testament, you had to go through a high priest in order to pray or in order to have access to God. And you would go into the temple and the high priest would go into the holies of holies where the Ark of the Covenant was. And he would walk in there and he had to be pure and clean before God in order to offer sacrifices for the sins of the, of the nation of Israel. And there was, a, there, was a, there was a veil that had 12 veils which represented each tribe from the tribe of Israel, the tribe of Jacob of Israel. And you, he would come into that, past that curtain and come into the holies of holies and offer sacrifices, but only once a year. And nobody, listen, nobody in the whole camp had access to God. What happened? I and mean, this is this why I get, I'm sorry, but I get so excited about Easter. And people, people say, well, we're not going to be able to have Easter anymore. Easter's on, well, listen, the coronavirus doesn't cancel Easter. It doesn't cancel the resurrection. Let me tell you something, you can't cancel the resurrection. The resurrection already happened and it continues to happen because it's just like Cody said, we, we're all people under construction. None of us are perfect. We need a savior. And when Jesus died on the cross, and we're going to celebrate this next week, but when Jesus died on the cross and he gave his life, the sinless sacrifice, I'll never understand that kind of love that God gave for you and for me. The sinless sacrifice, when he died on the cross, the Bible says that the veil of the temple, those 12 veils were torn in two and, and released the presence of God so that we could have a, a God. We don't serve a God who cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities, but we can go directly and boldly to the throne of God. We can come into his presence and say, God, I need you. I need your help. It's not my brother, it's not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord. And I'm standing in the need of prayer. God, please minister to me and be my Savior, be my Lord, because I know none of these things, heaven and earth have passed away. Things are always changing in our world. And we can't put our faith in something that doesn't have a firm foundation. I'm thank you, thankful that God is a solid rock and he's the foundation that we lean on. That's good preaching. It's not my notes, but it's good preaching. Uh, access to heaven is so much more about relationship than it is a religion. It's so much more about having... See, man wants to create rules and religion, and God wants to create a relationship with you. And in that relationship... You will learn. You see, the only reason that God doesn't want us to sin because it's bad for us. It's not like God's up there with a ball peen hammer wanting to hit you over the head every time you sin. That's not the way it is. He's up there saying, Hey, this is the way. And Jesus said it. Jesus said, I am, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Why? Because he was a supreme sacrifice. There's only one name given under heaven whereby man must be saved, and it's the name of Jesus. Why? Because only Jesus, the only perfect, sinless, selfless one to ever walk on the face of this earth, gave his life so that we could have eternal life. I'm, I'm going to tell you what, I've been a Christian since I was four years old. I gave my heart to the Lord. I knelt down at a piano bench in Stoneham, Colorado, and I gave my life to Jesus when I was four years old. And I used to think that I was a pretty holy guy. I mean, like, I'm so spiritual. And I thought that I, and then I asked God to reveal to me in my life 
who I am. And my holiness compared to God's holiness, hey, listen, the Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy rags when it's compared to the righteousness of God. And you might be saying, you might be going, well, I'm just, I'm a good guy. <laughs> well, listen, there's a lot of good guys, but we're not that good. We need God. We need his saving grace. We need, his, we need purpose in our lives. And uh, a lot of these guys in the parable, they were upset. The apostle Paul, he murdered Christians. And Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. And you might be saying, well, I've never murdered anybody. <laughs> well, I haven't either, but I sure need Jesus. I haven't done this. Listen, it's not about what you don't do. We think that we're going to get to heaven by the things that we don't do. Well, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't chew, and I don't go with girls who do. It's not about what we don't do. Y'all with me? It's about what we do do. And the Bible says if we'll, if we'll accept Christ as our personal Savior, he said, he said that we have all sinned. This, what the, this is what the guys in the parables didn't understand. He said that they needed a Savior. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But he also said if we would confess our sin, that he would be faithful. I love that word. And just, justice, he would be just to forgive us of all. Everybody say all. All of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so that's what I've done in my life. Does that mean that I'm perfect? No. Does that mean Pastor Jason's perfect? No. Does that mean Cody or Jake or Jody? Does that mean they're perfect or Darla? No. You, none of us are perfect. Oh, except Jesus. You see, a lot of people like to make up a lot of religions in our world. I don't know if you've noticed, there's a jillion religions out there. God's not looking for more religions. He's looking for relationships with people. And that's why I'm going to say, no matter where you're at today, God loves you. And he wants the best for you. I realized when I was about 14 years old that I was an undisciplined boy. And my dad agreed with me because back in the day, you, you may not be one of these types of guys, but I grew up in a home where they, they'd uh, give you, they, they'd give you, like my parents would give me like whippings with a belt on the seat of my, they never abused me, but they, they gave me, my dad's name was Jasper and he was just uh, like, they, back in the day they had his, his name on the back of his belt and I had backward Jaspers on my rear end. <laughs> Well, I was get, I'd get a lot of whippings because I, I was just always kind of like, I guess, rebellious. And uh, my dad, he says, he says, he's like, he's like, Randy, this isn't right. It's not, it's not right for me to keep whipping you like this. And uh, I'm tired of whipping you. And when he said that, I was like, Cool, I'm, I'm, I'm getting tired, I'm tired of being whooped. And, uh, and then he said something that, that, that caught me by surprise. He said, Randy, I'm not going to whip you anymore. And I was like, whoa, this is a great day right here. It's a great day. He, but he said, after that, he said, from now on, he said, you're going to whip me when you're bad. I thought, in my rebellious state, I thought, well, you're making the rules. <laughs> so, so the next day, obviously, you guessed it. I was bad again. And my dad, he did like he's always done. He went, went to the bedroom, and, and uh, he took his belt off, and he handed me his belt. And he got down on his hands and knees, and he, he handed me that belt, and he said, Randy, I want you to whip me. And I'm like... Now, I'd been taught all my life that I needed to respect my dad. Here's my dad on his knees, and he said, Randy, whip me. I, want, I know you've been bad, but I want you to whip me. And uh, so I, 
I, I started to whip him, and then he kind of kind of yelled at me. He said, Randy, whip me. So I just kind of tapped him a little bit. And uh, he said, Randy, I want you to give me a whipping because I want you to know what it feels like to have to give you a whipping. I don't want to do it anymore, and I'm tired of whipping you, and it hurts me to have to whip you. And uh, I just threw, threw the belt down. I said, Dad, I can't whip you. I can't do it. You can whip me all you want, but, but I can't do it. And Dad got up, and he walked out of the bedroom. And the Lord spoke to my heart. And he said, Randy, that's why I sent Jesus to, to take the weapon for you. You see, he paid a debt I couldn't pay. I owed a debt. I couldn't pay the debt. My sin, I could never get good enough. I needed somebody to take my sin away. And so... Jesus knew that. I never could understand why Jesus would go to the cross, why God would send his only begotten son. Then I understood that God, all-powerful God, could raise his son up on the third day. He knew that, but he knew that God, that the God, meaning Jesus, his own son, would have to give his life so that I could have eternal life because God is a just God. And Jesus took the whipping, and Jesus made me made it so that I could come into his presence and I could have access to God. I didn't have to go through a high priest, but I could go directly to the throne. And that's why I pray every day because it's a privilege to be able to pray. It's a privilege to know God, to have him live in my heart. He paid a debt. He did not owe. I owed a debt I couldn't pay. I had to have somebody take my sin away. Is it fair? You, you want to talk about fair, that's not fair for Jesus. But God doesn't judge fairness the way you and I judge it. That's the point of the parable. God judges it as a just God, and he has a plan for each and every one of us. You think about the thief on the cross. The thief on the cross, he's over there. One, one thief is bad-mouthing Jesus, and, and uh, the other thief over there, he's like, hey, listen, we deserve this. We have this coming because we've done this. Jesus hadn't done anything. And Jesus looks over at the, the thief on the cross that has a repentant heart, and he said this. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. Was it fair? I imagine the thief, hey, that ain't fair. But this guy had the bad attitude. He had a bad heart. This guy had a humble heart, a teachable heart, and a repentive heart. And he said, God, I know I deserve this. And Jesus said, hey, I see your heart. My challenge to you today, let Jesus see your heart. Let him see your heart. Don't be ashamed of your past. And, 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 and don't be too proud to say, I need a Savior. Because the truth is, we all need a Savior and why do we need a Savior? It's because of God's grace and because of his mercy. It's just because of his grace. So today, if you've never accepted Christ as your personal Savior, maybe you've never accepted him. Maybe the Bible says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God's raised him from the dead, that we'll be saved. So today, I'd like to make this available. I'd like to help you accept Christ as your Savior uh, simply by inviting him to come into your life, to come into your heart, and to begin this relationship with him. That's really why we do church every Sunday and throughout the week as well. But I just want to challenge you, if you've never accepted Christ and you realize that God loves you like you've never been able to comprehend let me tell you something you'll never be able to fully comprehend God's love for you so today if you'd like to accept him as your savior I want to help you do that the Bible says if we confess with our mouth believe in our heart that God's raised him from the dead that will be saved I want to help you confess with your mouth and I just want to say this if there's families that's watching today or you're watching with your friend
I just challenge everybody in the room to repeat this prayer out loud. Maybe somebody's in, in the room with you that needs to do this. We want to help them along the way. And so <clears throat> I just want to help you pray. And so please repeat after me. And let's just, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Just say, dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Lord, I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I invite you into my heart. I invite you into my life. From this day forward, I give my life to you. Help me to read my Bible, to pray, show up for church, and get baptized. I love you, Jesus. Teach me to love you more. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, I guess if, if you accepted Christ as your Savior, uh, we, just shoot us an email or, or there's, a, there's a form you can fill out. We'd love to send you a Bible if we could get your address. Uh, we want to give you a free Bible because we love you and we appreciate it. Now, listen, Cody and the band is going to come back up and sing. Come on up, guys. Uh, <clears throat> there was a, there's a little story told about a, a uh, yeah, there's a little story told about a, uh, a guy that he went to heaven, and he asked God, he said, he said, I want, I want to get into heaven, and, and uh, of course, uh, St. Peter's at the, at the gate, and we, we, we say this with all of our little stories, uh, and St. Saint, Saint Peter says, well, you have to have 100 points in order to get into heaven, and he said, tell me what you've done. So the guy goes, well, he says, says I was a deacon in the church and, and I, uh, I, I taught Sunday school class and, and uh, I went to church faithfully and paid my tithe every, every, every week. And St. Peter says, well, that, that's, that's worth one point. And that guy looked at me like, I can't believe that's just one point. So he said, what else have you done? He said, well, I, was a, I, I lived with my wife uh, for 25 years, 30 years, and, and uh, I was a good father, and I, I was good in the community, and I, I gave to community affairs and everything, and uh, I just helped everybody out. And, they, and the guy goes, St. Peter says, well, that's worth another point. And the guy is just like, I can't believe it. I just got two points for all that? And he says, yeah. He said, well, I, I, he said, only, I can see right now the only way I'm going to get to heaven is by God's grace. And St. Peter looked at him and said, that's worth 98 points because that's all you need is God's grace. And it's by his grace. Well, before I play this, I'd like to say something. And this is not going to be a... This is not going to be a testimonial uh, like you saw at the beginning of the service. This is not a uh, look at me and how far I've come type situation. Um, you know, a lot of people have been to my shows and my concerts, and you've heard me say at different points in the night, uh, I want all my glory uh, for my career to go to my Lord and Savior. Um, and that's not something we do for uh, attention. That's not something we do as a gimmick. That's just something that's been a conviction on my heart. And the reason why is not because my walk is so great. It's that I struggle every day with a lot of the th same things that you struggle with. And, you know, I was sitting there thinking as Pastor Randy was talking about those that are watching at home that have maybe never thought about this. Uh, I thought that I lived pretty good. I thought that I had a foundation underneath my feet that it was going to get me the rest of the way for a long time. And uh, it turns out I, I didn't. And I had to really apply myself and start like Randy said, it's really hard when you ask God who you really are because it's it's kind of hard to face. And um, I'm sure a lot of people out there watching that don't normally watch the service and they tune in because I'm playing have their own perception of who I am and, and what my life is like. And uh, I'm just going to tell you, I struggle. I struggle with a lot of things. And uh, I, wrote these, I wrote these lyrics down um, because I felt the need to. And this song may be for me today, but there's a chance it might be for you too. And uh, it's called uh, By Your Grace. And uh, I feel like the only reason that I'm here today is uh, the only reason I have my wife, my children, my career uh, is by His grace. And uh, it's, it's very overwhelming for a guy like me to know that my daily failure 
my daily failure uh, is what gives him the most admonishment, the most, uh, the most praise, because he gets to be the guy that fixes me every day, and it is hard. And uh, I hope somebody out there uh, feels what I'm saying and is struggling with the same things. Uh, just know that you're not by yourself. I'm aware of everything that's wrong with me But still you accept me anyway And I live with the past I can't get past Cause it still haunts me So I'm asking for the courage to make a change by your grace, I have hope. You've already paid every debt I owe. Please take my chains and make me see that by your grace, been set free. where I stand Let me not take for granted all the depths of your forgiveness Cause the only way I'm gonna be a better man is by your grace I been set free.